Hi, thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. So today we're going to be talking about Don't Call the Wolf by Alexandra Ross. Um, this is a brilliant debut novel. I mean, it was so good that I read the opening and then I read it once more and I added Once Upon a Time to it because, it, you know, I was reading it to my son. And I'm like, you know what? This is a great story that starts off perfectly with Once Upon a Time. And it's so perfect that you can even end it with... And they all lived happily ever after. I mean, it's it's a fantasy novel, but it open it opens and closes so much like a fairy tale that that's where the beauty lies. You know, beauty lies in the storytelling and the fantasy, and it's great. I mean, that opening sequence has absolutely no dialogue to it. It's just a story, and you're so submerged in the detail in the fantasy in this invasion of this brilliant gold dragon and of these dark creatures coming up from the darkness. I mean, it's... It just flows so perfectly. I mean, I was immediately drawn in by that prologue. It was beautifully structured and beautifully written. And it creates this world of fantasy for the reader. Giving it a proper foundation and I mean that that just goes hand in hand with the world building you know I love novels that have world building that doesn't take too much away from you know the storytelling and the characterization sometimes you have um, authors that are so focused on the world building that they kind of um, lose sight of the characters at times and they kind of have these scenes that just feel like filler but they're really world building but they feel like filler this doesn't have any of that. Rocks uses Ross uses her Polish roots to give the world to give this story an old world edge. So that's why that's like another reason, you know, I'm also reading the Grim Fairy Tales to my son, so um this that's another reason why this novel feels so much like a classic fairy tale. Because it has that old world edge to it. And it's been a long time since I've read a novel that was so imbued in fantasy, but also has this sort of nostalgic feel to it. Um, and, you know, she also uses her language very carefully in the, in the novel. She uses key words, you know, like university. Um, that's the one I can think of the most. She uses... Polish language throughout the novel, but you can kind of understand, like, yes, there is a glossary at the end, but you don't really need it. Because she uses a beautiful structure in her sentences. So you, you can use context to understand where these words are coming from or what they mean. You, so you're not lost. You're not, like, reading this novel and you're like, ugh, what's this mean? Um, a lot of, you know, people struggle when you're trickling in a foreign language that's unfamiliar to you. Um, Because then you're just kind of like, what does this mean? It kind of loses the reader. But Ross doesn't do that. She is able to incorporate her native language into the story while not losing the reader as well. You know, the reader can understand through the story, through the context. And I thought that was really well done. I thought that was really brilliant on her part to be able to do that because it is a hard thing to do. One would think it isn't, but when you write in your native language, you know what it is. So it kind of, you know, you kind of lost in how to translate it to the reader. But context, you know, sentence structure, using language very carefully is what's great about this novel and that's what Ross is able to do you know she celebrates her roots she celebrates where she comes from in order to tell this fairy tale like story now um I also think the characters are really good let's start with Lucas um Lucas I'm just gonna call him Lucas it's L-U-K-A-S-Z uh, I thought he was really interesting. He is a wolf lord. 
you know, he is a, he came from the mountain that was invaded by the dragon, and, you know, him and his brothers, they had to flee, you know, because of the dragon, and because he's a wolf lord, um, he's also a dragon hunter. What's really interesting about Lucas is his characterization highlights the difference in social structure. Um, he tries so hard to fit into this world, but he will never be one of these people. They won't let him, you know? They do not recognize him as an equal. They recognize him as a savage, a barbarian, almost. Even though, I mean, he's a pretty brilliant person. Um, people even remark, like, oh, you can read? You know, like, how can you read? So, you know, it's a really great way to use him to introduce this difference in the social structure. But what I also think about Lucas is the way Ross shows the reader his character growth. There are segments. He has nine brothers, so there are segments showcasing his brothers, um, his relationship with his brothers, his personality, and how his brothers influence his personality, but also how them leaving to return to the mountain influenced his personality. You get to see those shifts in how he changes. You get to see how they influenced how who he has become by the end of this novel. But you also get to meet um, his brothers and understand his relationship with them. And I kind of love that, you know, this strong family element that Ross creates while also highlighting, you know, his very strong, slightly aggressive, um, but brooding and lonely personality. I mean, Lucas is very, he's, he's a little broken. Every time a brother leaves, he gets a little bit more broken because they leave and he knows that they're, they die fighting the dragon, you know, no one comes back. And when he finally returns home near the end of the novel, I mean, that's such a, an almost heartbreaking moment because it's so untouched but warm it's so empty and seeing his memories of the warmth he felt there and you juxtapose that with the coldness of the emptiness I mean it's it really creates a strong feeling for the reader and, and it allows the reader to further connect with Lucas. I mean, you can connect with him throughout the story because all he wants is to be with his brothers. That's all he wants. He, he's given up trying to fit in. <coughs> Pardon me. And he just wants to be with his brothers. Now, as for Ren, I also think she's pretty, pretty strong as a character. I mean, she is the princess of the woods. That's what she calls herself. The queen of the woods, actually. She calls herself the queen of the woods. Um, she hunts all the creatures that come out in the dark. People from the village, you know, they call her a monster because she did attack someone, but um, the attack was a mistake. She is a girl who can turn into a lynx. And I think that's really cool how she can transform and go back and forth. So her personality is also, it's a, it's a pretty aggressive personality because she just wants to keep her forest safe. And I mean, she's, she's a very strong character. I'll say this about her. She's a very strong, um, character. She cares about her woods. She doesn't really understand um, humanity, really, or humans. She In her world, everything is just black or white. There is no gray. It's just black or white. But she soon discovers that, you know, not everything is as clear-cut as she thinks it is. And so she also develops, you know, she 
becomes more in tune with her humanity, with her human side that she's often neglected. Because she doesn't really like humans. Um, And who can blame her? They come into her woods. They destroy. um, And, you know, she hates that. I mean, these are her woods. Everything she does is to sort of protect these humans. And then they just kind of just throw things at her. Like she's a monster and they just want to kill her. But that doesn't stop her from doing what's right. Um... But when her and Lucas meet, I mean, you get to really see how these two characters develop and grow. They both open each other's eyes in a way, and I think that's really interesting how it's written, how it's done. You know, I can't really explain it because you have to read it to see it. You know, Ross does a great job of showing the reader the character development not just telling the reader she shows us how they grow by going back to the past and showing us who they were and then go, showing us the present and who they are and how they've changed and overall ultimately I mean I thought this was a really excellent novel I, I loved it from beginning to end I love the segments with Lucas and his brother. I love the history. I love the magic. Oh, it's just, it was so beautifully written. And I think as a debut, oh, this was a fantastic debut. And if you love fantasy, if you love fairy tales and magic, I mean, it's such a great way to explore this world and this narrative. Um, It has such a nostalgic fairy tale feel to it that create that just it'll lure you in especially if you love fairy tales so um this was once again don't call the wolf by alexandra ross published by harper team i give it four stars uh go ahead and purchase it from your local bookseller and if money's too tight just check it out from your local library Have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.